Hello, I'm El Director, and you are watching Indie Rebel, Hollywood effects without a Hollywood budget. Today, we're going to be taking a look at virtual sets uh, and such. Now, this actually comes to us from a post on Blender Artists. There was a user over there who was contemplating buying a virtual new set and wanted to know how you would go about putting an actor into that virtual set. Uh, they're basically downloading a 3D model off of a site, and it's a really cool looking newsroom and such. And so this is just one method of how I would go about putting an actor, filming them on a green screen, and dropping them into uh, that virtual set piece. This is by no means the only way or the definitive way to go about doing it. This is just a method that I personally am familiar with, uh, having done this on a children's show a couple years ago. And we constantly would put kids into this virtual... Uh, ours was, it was a newsroom, but we modified it to look like a, uh, a game show type set piece. And such and we were using cinema 4d at the time uh, but I'm a blender user at heart so we're going to show you how to do this using blender today now the first thing you're going to want to do is go and jump into your editing software of choice and edit your green screen footage now when you film your green screen shots uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to use nuke here today I do have natron we could use natron but nuke is just a lot more responsive and the techniques are going to be pretty much the same I'm just a little bit more familiar with Nuke, having been using this consistently at my day job, so that's what we're using right now. So let's say this is the shot that we're filming. We've got these lovely ladies right here. By the way, I got this off the internet, so you guys should be able to find this yourselves as well. I like collecting different green screen uh, pieces just to practice my keying. You can see I've got like a helicopter. I've got uh, the Green Ranger himself. He had posted this online. I've got a fighter jet soldier kneeling down and then this girl as well and i just like practicing my chroma king uh stuff for sh uh, shots and things and so i've got these ladies up here and that's what we're using for this one today so when you film it you're gonna put the camera on a tripod put your actor in front of the green screen and do not move the camera at all uh, we're gonna add the camera move completely in post and we're gonna show you how to do that but the first thing we need to do is film it and then you bring it into your editing software and you're going to edit it and every time you add an edit it's going to be a new camera angle where we can actually cut together different cameras and such that way but we're just going to be working with one shot and that's what we're going to do so let's go ahead and key this out first because that is the first step now you could very easily do this inside of your editing software uh, nothing is wrong with that at all I'm just more comfortable keying stuff here inside a nuke and so that's what we're going to used right now but the important thing is you just want to be able to, to key out your footage as best you can and render out with the alpha channel so now we've got the girls all keyed you can see the alpha for them let's go ahead and add a right node and we are going to choose where to save this in this case I'm just going to stick it onto my desktop and you can see I've already done one right here called gs.mov we'll just save and yeah we'll write over that that's fine and the most important thing is making sure that I come up to my channels and you want to make sure that you're exporting in RGBA. You want to make sure that all this black here is going to be transparent. Um, I'm not sure if things like Adobe Premiere have the capability of doing that. Uh, I'm not even sure if Sony Vegas can do that. I know that's what the uh, user was asking about was doing this with Vegas. But uh, this is the way I know about doing it. You just want to be able to render out your green screen shots completely keyed with your actor on a transparent background. And that's what we're gonna do. So whenever you're ready, we're gonna scroll down and hit render and let it do its magic. When you are done, you're going to end up with your shot. And so we've got the actors on a transparent background, okay? And now we're ready to proceed to the next step. So we're gonna jump into Blender. Here I've set up a virtual newsroom of sorts, all right? This is not anything elaborate by any means I was just trying to mimic a little bit of what uh, a virtual set might look like so in this case you got your backdrop you've got your ground and then you've got a desk the desk is actually super helpful for this technique I'm going to show you because then you don't have to have contact points uh, with your actors feet in the ground the, the desk allows you to hide a lot of things that way so let's go ahead and bring in um, our footage now as you notice I am using blender 2.8 it is still in beta it is not like considered stable yet but for our purposes it's stable enough for everything I'm doing everything I'm going to show you will work the same in blender 279 just the buttons will be located in different places by the way I just have to show you guys a little shout out here you may notice now as you hover over with these icons here 
all you have is the name of the icon. Before, it used to have a bunch of gobbledygook like this. Like in this case, it says active workspace showing in the window. And then it, like, it gives you some sort of uh, thing for what that actually is. And I made a suggestion about how about we just have the names of whatever that button is rather than all the techno jargon. And I made it the remark just in passing on the Blender Artist forums. And what do you know, it actually got implemented, I think it was about a week or two later. And I noticed that it now just has the names. It doesn't have all the technical jargon. Like this one right here. Seeing data block consisting in objects with blah, 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 blah. It's like, who cares? I don't even know that stuff. I just want to know what this is. And so that's what they've done now. And so uh, that was my little contribution to Blender 2.8. And I'm very happy about that. So let's go ahead and bring in our footage now. And if you haven't already, you want to go into your preferences. And under add-ons, start typing image. I And I just typed I am. And I have the option to enable import export import images as planes and we want to make sure that that options enabled and then save your preferences so we've got it there which is good now i can go ahead and add in going down to image images as planes and i'm going to go find that green screen footage in this case it's right here on my desktop import images as planes and here it is down here if you can't see it it's this little tiny bit right back down over here so what I want to do is I want to go and scale this up a bit and we're going to move it back a little and we can move it up. Now for the final positioning here, I actually probably want to jump over to my camera view. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to kind of scale this and move this around till I'm happy with where everything is positioned here and where they are in location to the set or in relation to the set. Now we're currently using EV right now. And as you can see, there's no transparency on this, but if I flip over to cycles, the transparency is there and everything is working just the way it should. I've got some nice reflections here on the desk. You can see their reflections here on the surface, which is cool. So everything's completely interactive and that's just super awesome. So I'm going to move them up there about like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that no matter what my camera animation does, uh, that they will be facing the camera. And I guess before we do that, we could even go ahead and animate the camera, which in my case I have done already. If I select the camera, you can see I've got two keyframes, one set down here at frame zero, and then I've got another one down over here at the end at frame 100. And the thing to keep in mind when you're doing virtual sets like this is that you want to make sure that your camera doesn't get too far off to the side, revealing that these people are flat. If I flip back to Eevee, just so we can get some real time feedback here, You see, as I start rotating around, pretending that this is the camera view, eventually they just become super, super flat and it begins to look fake. However, uh, within reason, we actually do get a little bit of uh, parallax that we can move. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff with the cameras at this point. However, in order to make things easier for us, uh, let's go ahead and add a constraint to this image. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image and I'm going to come over here to my constraints and I want to add a track to. Again, I'm using the green screen footage for this. And the way I want to set this up is I want it to the target to be the camera. And we're going to do this on negative Z. And I'm just going to flip this to Y up. Okay. Now, if I back out a little bit here and I scrub through my shot as the camera moves, because I have keyframe that camera, it's just doing a side to side motion. You can see that they rotate with the camera. And I can even go so far as to come back here at frame uh, one, select my camera, and let's move the camera like even over to here and rotate that so it's pointing at them a little bit like that. And we are going to update that keyframe. So now we've got a much more dramatic move and you can see that they rotate with it. Now we do have a little bit of an issue. It looks like right here where it's cutting into the table a little bit and that's really easy to fix. All I gotta do is just push this back in space a little bit more and we're gonna be good to go. Now you may not always need to do this rotation thing. Like I said, I just find that it helps uh, nine times out of 10. Let's go ahead and set up our uh, scene frames here. We're gonna only do a hundred frame animation. And now if I play this, you can see 
that we've got something pretty decent going on here right now. Now, again, this is with Eevee, all right? We're going to do our final render with Cycles, but I just want to show you that you can get some real-time playback for setting up your shots. So we've got a, a virtual set now with live-action green screen elements dropped in. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and render this out. Well, how are we going to do that? Because we want to make sure that we can still color correct all of our elements separately afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to start layering things out and make use of the collections system in order to do that. So let's just go ahead and stop this animation here. And we will, for the sake of argument, flip back over to cycles. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my desk is in one collection. So I'm going to select the objects that make up my desk. And actually, you know what? I might as well even just join them together right now, too. And then we're going to move them to their own new collection. And we're going to call this desk. And then click OK. So now you can see I have a collection up here for desk. And I've got my desk within that. Let's go ahead and just rename that from cube to desk. So we know that we've got that. Then we want to take our actors and put them on their own collection as well. So I'm going to put them into a new collection. And we're going to call that actors. Or you can call it green screen or whatever you want to call it. Just whatever helps you out at this point. OK. So now we got them on their own. And there's the green screen element. And then we can take what's left, the backdrop and the floor, and we're going to put that into its new collection called background. And let's just go ahead and rename that. We'll just call it BG for background. Okay. So, and then we have our master collection up here that contains our camera as well as the, the various lights that we're using to illuminate the scene. So now what we want to do is go ahead and start trying to break this all out, okay? So before we get started rendering this out, we do want to make sure we check a few things. And the first thing I want us to check is that we come down here and underneath film in our uh, render settings here, we have transparency checked. So if you don't see that, it's going to be down here underneath films. So we're going to drop down film and then enable transparency. And what that's going to do is make sure that all of our backgrounds are going to have alpha channels built into them as well. So we're going to want to render out three different passes here. We're going to render out basically the desk, the actors, and the background. For right now, let's go ahead and shut the background off. I'm going to turn off viewport and render. And you can see here we have the ladies and the desk. And we want to make sure that we can keep their reflections in here. So if I were to just go ahead and like render a still frame right now as if I was rendering the animation, you'll see that they are still here a part of it. Which, if you've already gone through and color corrected and you're happy with how everything looks in the shot right now, you don't need to go through this process. I'm trying to show you guys an easy way to have complete control over every aspect of the image uh, when we get ready to do our compositing here. So uh, we can see that this is not going to work for us because I want them separately onto their own layer. So what else can we do? Well, I can actually come down here to the actors, and if I right click on them, that uh, collection, again, I'm using the collection, not the actual object, and then I go down to view layer, I can go set and direct only. And what that's going to do is shut them off, but still keep them as if they're in the scene. So we still have all their reflections. And if I go F12, we'll see that it did in fact work. It's rendering just the desk without anything else. It's not rendering the girls, it's not rendering the background, it's rendering just the desk, but we're keeping those reflections. And this is what's gonna allow you to keep your interaction uh, with your environment as we render out our 3D uh, virtual sets. So I can see that this works out great. This is my desk layer and this is exactly what I want for that. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna go over here to my output settings and make sure everything looks good. 1920 by 1080, yes, I like that. I'm going to choose where I want to stick this. In this case, I'll probably just throw these back onto my desktop because it's easy to find here. We're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this a virtual set. And I'm going to go into there. And we're going to add a new folder. I'm going to call this one desk. And I'm going to go into that folder. And then we're going to call this desk underscore. And hit accept. I like rendering things out in an image sequence format. For something like this that 
again we're just doing a tutorial i'm probably just gonna do a png it's not super high quality but it's gonna be good enough for what we're looking for um usually you'd probably want to do this either as like a dpx or a tga or uh, even an exr that kind of a thing just whatever you do whatever format you pick uh, just make sure that you have the ability to render in RGBA. You want to make sure that you're rendering that alpha channel because we're going to need that for our compositing here in just a moment. So now that I got that all set up, I will go ahead and go to render and render animation. And we're just going to cut this loose and let it go. And then uh, I'll check back with you guys here in just a bit and we'll show you how to set up the next thing that we need. Okay, well, now as we can see, the... Uh, first render of the desk is now complete. So let's go ahead and render out the next thing that we need to do. So I'm going to now go ahead and disable the desk and we're going to render just the actors. So I'm going to right click on them, view layer and clear the indirect only that we set uh, just before. And that's going to bring them back into it. And now what I can do is come down here and change the name. Actually, let's go ahead and sort this all out. So let's go up a folder and we're going to add a folder. And we're going to call this actors and we'll go into there and we'll name it actors underscore and hit accept. And again, I just always like to double check everything. So I'm going to F12 it to be sure that everything's looking good. And it is so I can escape out of that. It's just them, nothing else. And now I can go back up to what I did before and go render render animation and now we're going to render just the actors and then we'll finish up by rendering just the background so i'll check back with you guys here again in just a few all right so now the render of the green screen actors is completed let's go ahead and render our background so what i want to do is i want to turn off the collections for the actors i'm going to turn on the collection for the background now I also at this point want to turn on my collections for the desk because we have these shadows on the ground and then what I'm going to do is just like I did with the girls I'm going to right click on that collection go to view layer and set indirect only and what this does is creates the shadow of where that desk is going to end up being and now I can jump into my render settings and pop into here and we'll get the setup now I did try to do this with Eevee earlier uh, just to speed things up because this background render will take the longest because everything in the frame has pixel data. There's no transparency at this point. Um, however, I'm using a version of Blender 2.8 that is about a month and a half old. It's not stable and solid yet and I kept crashing EV every time I tried to do this at this point. So I'm going to submit that as a bug report. Actually, at first I'll download the most recent version and try it in there first. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it with cycles. So we've got our background folder set up and we're just going to call it BG underscore and let it add its own file names as we go. I'm going to hit accept for that. So that's all going to be good. It's again, making sure we're RGBA 16 bit, 24 frames a second. Everything's looking great so far. We'll just double check that we still have transparency enabled and we do. So at this point, we're going to now render out this little bit right here and the really cool thing again like i say is that we're going to be able to keep the shadows uh in the render again we're doing this with my gpu it's going to take a while honestly like we're 617 i started this tutorial at about 4 30. these renders take a long time to do especially when you're doing virtual sets and we need these different layers for compositing but at the end the result is totally worth it so with all that said i'm going to go up to render and render animation and uh, let this thing start doing its thing and I'll check back with you guys whenever this ends up uh, finishing it's probably gonna be at least an hour but for you it should be instantaneous okay here we are it is now 8 20 p.m. and our background render has finally finished all right awesome let's go ahead and just save our project I can literally hear my computer warming up now as it's been in basically like doing nothing mode for a while Blender's now frozen. There we go. Now we're good. Let's go and quit out of Blender. And we will jump into a normal video editor. In this case, I think I'll just use Premiere CS6. Do not recommend the CC collection. I know it's pretty hip to be on Premiere CC, but uh, CC is garbage as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we will call this Virtual Set. 
and we'll just use the DSLR 24p format. Why not? All this will be changed in a moment anyway. And now we want to go ahead and start bringing in our clips. I saved them on my desktop in the virtual set folder. Let's go ahead and start with the background first. And we're going to tell it that it is an image sequence and open that. And then we want to go to, let's see, modify interpret footage and make sure that the frame rate is going to be 24 frames a second because that is what I actually rendered out of Blender. And we will go and drop this onto our background layer of video, change sequence settings. Now we are looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom into that. Just like that. Sound effects do help. Sorry if I sound crazy, but it is now four hours since I started this tutorial. Uh, then we'll go into the actors layer. Select them, image sequence, open. Same thing as before, right click, modify, interpret footage. Assume a frame rate of 24 frames a second, hit okay. Bring that onto this layer. There they are, looking lovely. And let's do our desk. There's the desk, image sequence, open. Right click, modify, interpret. And yes, you can probably hear my dog bouncing around in the background because he is fed up with me working on this today. All right. So now, as you can see, we have literally our actors placed into a virtual set. Everything's looking good. And the best part about this all is that we've got total control over the colors now at this point and uh, our compositing. So if I can go to effects, video effects, uh, let's go color correction. I think color balance is the three ways. So let's go and drop that on. Let's drop it onto the, the girls, the actors. Go to our effect controls. Nope, that's not the one I want. Uh, go ahead and delete it. I literally have not used this in forever. Let's try, if, oh, there we go. Three way color corrector. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, now we're talking. So now I can like look at this and look at them in relation to the shot and be like, okay, what needs to be done? Uh, I might want to like try to like screw with my black levels a little bit. Let's see here. Kind of brighten them a little. There we go. It's looking a little bit better. And then maybe we give it just kind of a stylized shadows go blue. Highlights go towards orange. And maybe we say that that's good and we play it. There you go. And we have now placed actors into a virtual set. Now, granted, yes, this is a still image that I used. I didn't have the time to go record myself in front of a green screen. Um, but this would actually probably look even better with a person that's actually moving. You're not going to notice the, uh, the pivoting as much because they are pivoting to face the camera given the extreme camera move that we are doing. And, uh, but you can see just really how well that works. And again, you can turn layers on and off. There's the desk off on, turn the girls off on and the background as well. And again, you could do all of this inside a blender. Absolutely. But you're going to need to get your color matching and color correction done from the get go by breaking it off into layers like this and recombining it in your editing suite, whether it be uh, Premiere, Vegas, Final Cut, Avid, Resolve, whatever, uh, HitFilm, you know, God rest your souls if you guys are using HitFilm, um, you just get a lot more control over your image and your compositing at that point. I could literally, you know, right now if I want to, like let's say I decided that the foreground just didn't look right, I could come back into here We'll drop our three ways onto the foreground, go back into it. Let's maybe go down to saturation and maybe I just wanted to juice it up like crazy. And for whatever reason, I decided that this is the way I want the shot to look. Guess what? I've got the control to do that at this point. Whereas had I rendered this all straight out of Blender in one pass, I would not have this kind of control over the image. So whenever you're doing any sort of compositing, always try to give yourself the most options possible. Now, realistically, if this was me, I would probably go back and composite the solid nuke. Um, but if you're only working with a, an NLE, this is definitely a good way to go.
So just to recap, because I always like recapping at the end of these things, you will bring in your green screen footage into your nonlinear editor. You will make your cuts, knowing that each cut becomes a brand new shot. And then on top of that, uh, you're going to go ahead and probably do your keying inside of the editor or render out your shots and bring them into an actual compositing program like I did here. Making sure that you can render out whatever you do with your RGBA. That A is very important as we can see. And that will then allow you to import that into Blender as an image plane, uh, place it into your virtual set, run it out each of your elements as we've uh, just done, and you will be good to go. So that wraps it up for this. Four hours later for me, probably only 20 minutes for you guys. Lucky you. But I hope this has been helpful. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you got any questions down below, and we will see you next time right here on Indie Rebel. I'm L Director. Have a great night. Peace out.